Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, and I'm really excited today to show you how you can install a carbon fiber diffuser from Keys Motorsports on your BMW F32. All right, guys, just a quick walk around. So, you know, I've got a video out of replacing the M Sport uh, front and rear bumpers so that, that I've already done, but I've decided to take my car one step further and go ahead and install the carbon fiber diffuser. So what we're going to do is we're going to be replacing this entire surround around the exhaust tips, they're underneath the, the reflectors, all the way to the other side. And what that's going to look like is this. So you can see, and it even has the vents here on the outside, which are really, really cool. So I'm excited to do this. Now, as you can tell, I've got my car up in the air. You don't necessarily have to do that. Now, I did it to make it a little bit easier to show you the work, but also a little bit, e a little bit easier to take the rear bumper cover off. Because what we're going to need to do is we're going to be pulling a whole series of screws and bolts all down the sides, across the bottom, and then your bumper cover, bumper cover is going to come off. Let me show you how you do that. Okay, so looking here at a low angle, you've got one, two, three, eight millimeter bolts, let's slide underneath the tail here, which is again why I wanted to have it up in the air. We've got another eight millimeter here and here, the whole series all the way across. Now, in my case, I also have three 10 millimeter, forgive the lighting here a little bit, one, two, three across. So you're gonna pull this whole series all the way across. Now your car is probably going to be the same. Like I said, this is the M Sport bumper. So it might be a little bit different, all depending on your car, but it is really, really simple. So I'm gonna pull the three out of each wheel well, all the ones across the bottom, and then those three 10 millimeter right across the middle. Then I'll show you about how to take the rest of this off. All right, so I've got the three longer eight millimeters, one, two, three, out along the side. You've got three along the bottom, which are shorter, one, two, three. You've got the three 10 millimeters across the middle, which secure where the kind of that sensor array sits. And then the same across this side. Now the other thing we're going to want to do is take your tail light out because your tail light is in the way of one of the screws that actually holds this in place. So I'm going to take your rain track off and I'll show you on the other side, but there's a, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here that needs to come out. So to take this off, you've got a little plastic rivet right here that you can turn with a flat screwdriver and then your rain track will come out. Now, since it's pressure fit, it'll just kind of come out on its own. As you can see, I just used my fingers, right? So your rain track will come up and kind of pull up and away, just like that. Now you can see your tail light. You've got two screw, or excuse me, two nuts that hold it in place. These are two 10 millimeter here and here. And then you've got the 10 millimeter here holding this, holding the top part of your uh, bumper cover on. So pull both of these, gently pull your tail light out and unplug. There's a little pressure clip on the plug, so just pull that out, take it out and set it aside. And then you can pull this 10 millimeter. In theory, you could probably do it with the light still in, but might as well just take it out to be safe, which I've done on the other side. It'll end up looking like this. As you can see, I've got my light out. Here's the plug. As you can see, it's got a little clip here that you just press on and then it pulls out and you're good to go. Now there's two more long screws that I want to get shown up to show you a little bit better. They're usually T20s right here and they're driven upwards to help hold this corner in place. I haven't taken those out because I want to show you those in a little bit greater detail. So let me get my other tail light out and I'll show you the rest and then the cover's off. Now you can always do this work if you want and take your wheel off. I don't think you really need to, so if you want to save that time, you can. So the reason why we took these three eight millimeters off is you reach in and you pull this splash guard out and away. And this is really hard to show, but where your body panel meets right here, right? On the inside, and I can put my finger on it right here, there's a T20 that's driven straight up. This has a loop on the inside of it, and this bolt is going through the loop to secure this corner. Once this is off, this whole piece will peel off. So just pull this cover back with your hand, peel it back, find that T20, and it will peel right off. The T20, in my case, looks like this. So I've taken the one off the other side so you can see it. So it's just mounted in this position like this and just needs to be backed back out. And then this whole thing will come off. So let me show you what the other side is because it's partially off. Because once you get that off and you have all the rest off, this whole thing kind of fits in with a series of kind of little clips and ridges. So you just grab the corner and very gently pull. And as you can see, the whole thing is loose now, with the exception of this other side where I still need to take that screw out. So let me take that out. Then we're gonna pull the bumper cover off and set it aside. Keep in mind, all your PDC sensors are still plugged in. 
So when you pull this off, reach in and unplug with the same sort of little pressure clips like these, pull out and unplug all your PDC sensors, take your cover off and set it aside. All right, really quickly, as you can see, super simple. Came right off, peels right off, and you've got all of your PDC sensors that are plugged in. So just be careful when you take this off or you can potentially pull a PDC sensor off your bumper which is a bit of a pain, right? So the socket itself will come off because this should unplug and leave the sensor behind on the bumper cover. If you pull your PDC sensor off, you're gonna have to get some of like that 3M double-sided double automotive, and that tape adhesive stuff or something similar to put them back on. I've had that happen. So it's not a big deal. And it's not something that, uh, you know, you're gonna have to have a shop fix for you or something, but very, very simple. So you can see it comes off really, really easy. So now we're gonna set the cover up and we're gonna walk you through how to insert the new carbon fiber diffuser into the existing piece. All right, so you can see I just, I just have it resting on a, on a chair that I have handy because uh, there's no need to get any tools in my workbench is completely covered. So plus I don't wanna scratch it up at all, but as you can see, this is the inside, it's, it's upside down, right? It's upside down, sitting kind of backwards, but you can see how this insert piece fits in with all these little clips. So what you're gonna do is back this piece out and back all those clips out to get the, the existing diffuser out. And it should be the same kind of regardless of what bumper you have. And the new one, which I'll sit down here, as you can see, has the same series of little tab clips that are going to go in the same places. Now, there's gonna be one potential additional step well, we may have to put some of these little flexible plastic securing screws through these tab mounts to make sure that this stays in tight. But let's get the existing one out first, and then I'll show you what it looks like to mount the new one. But as you can see, I've got the original diffuser out and I've got the new one sitting here, and you can see how it, how it just slots right back in the same place. And it's got all these tabs. Now, I took the previous one out. I started on this side. I just pulled to get it free of the tabs here and then just pop, 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 right along the line until the whole thing came out. So I've got the new one in and I'm gonna take the same process where I'm gonna slot all of the tabs on the new diffuser into the gaps. Now, like I said, if we need to, we may end up having to take an additional step. Now, because the way carbon fiber works and it's in these, in the way these tabs work, we may end up having to put them through the diffuser get them through the little slots and then drill a hole in the tab. And the great people from Keys Motorsports even included these little plastic flex rivets and uh, the drill bit. Now, if you don't like the flex rivets, you can even use zip ties as well, which may be a good alternative depending on how tight you wanna keep it. But let me get this fit into place first. And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna take the same approach. I'm gonna start on one side, just fit the tab in. So I'm kind of you know, doing with one hand right at the moment. Fit the tabs in all the way down the line until it's all in place. All right, let's get you up on what I've done so far. So I've done a little bit of work and I just want to show you what I've done because it's easier to show you than kind of mid-flight. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out is I pulled off a PDC sensor. <laughs> so this is what they should look like, right? And the sensor can come out. So even if you don't unplug it, there's these little locking tabs that you can pull and then the sensor itself will come out of the holder surround. I have found that these little locking tabs can be a little fragile. I've broken them before. So I usually try to unplug. And in, and in, in one particular case, when I unplugged it, when I was trying to unplug it, the, it just torqued the sensor right off. So I've got some of that 3M double-sided adhesive and I'm just gonna clean this off with a little isopropyl alcohol, redo the adhesive, because you'll see that's all it has on those sensor mounts. It's just adhe that 3M adhesive. So then I'm just gonna put it back on the sensor and I'll put it back here. So I'll talk about that in a second. But let's talk about the diffuser. So because of the way the carbon fiber pieces are made, you know, the plastic piece, these tabs that go into these gaps are much, much bigger, right? So, and in this case, because of the way carbon fiber is made, they can't really have as big and exaggerated as of those locking tabs. So they're not gonna fit in quite as well. Now, what Keys recommends is you actually drill very small holes and either can use the supplied little push rivets or zip ties. And I'm gonna use zip ties because I could, draw, I could drill smaller holes. So I drilled very small holes very, very carefully right here. As you can see, at every place that there's a tab, here, 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 and so on as I went through it, uh, 
that I can use then to secure to this piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tip this back over, slide all of those tabs back into place, and I'll show you what it looks like to run the zip tie through because I don't want any of them exposed. And then we're, gonna, we're going to run the zip tie through the hole and also over this little locking flange in the original piece. So let me get this back into place and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so let me give it a quick look all the way across. As you can see, it's partially kind of in place all the way, but let me, let me show you what I've done. And I think the zip ties really are the best approach to this. So a couple of them I've got partially done up just to help hold it in place as I was manipulating, manipulating the piece. But the rest of them are open because I wanted to show you. So what I found to be the easiest is like this. So what I have is, is I fed the zip tie down through the hole out and under this pl this plastic bar piece that comes across and then all I'll do is just close it and, and tighten the whole thing down and pull it in super, super tight, right? And I really think this is the best way to do this because I can cinch the whole thing down using the zip ties and it's gonna be really clean all the way across. So this end is all in because I kind of fit this end in first. But what I found is, is that the zip ties are long enough. It doesn't have to be, you can see there's still some gap. It's not slotted into place. I'll do that as I tighten it down. I'll slot, you know, the tabs into the little holes because the zip tie is routed through the hole and it's all good to go and it'll all suck down super tight. And it, it really is that simple. This isn't a hard job. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. So let me walk through all this. I'll, I'm going to tighten it all down and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I'll, I'll secure and you know, I tell you, I really think this is the superior way of doing this because what this allows you to do is when the zip ties are loose, if you have to adjust a little bit, get it straight a little bit, you can as you go. But then also as, as, as it all comes together, you can grab the zip tie and pull and cinch it super tight. So I mean, this piece is in incredibly tight now, all the way across. Now, the one thing I will caution you is, keep in mind when you drill a small hole through the little tab, you don't have a lot of material at the top of that hole, right? So if you're really just sawing back and forth on this, you could break the hole that you just created. So, you know, tighten it down, straighten it out, tighten it down. Make sure that the tension that you're putting on with the zip tie is on the zip tie itself and on the plastic, not on the carbon fiber. Okay? So, all the way down, all the way across, in super tight. I love it. This is going to be great. I really do think this is the superior way of doing this. So, now I'm going to snip off all the little tails that I've got. And then I'm also going to secure my PDC sensor. I'll show that to you just because it wasn't part of my original product or project. <laughs> but just in case you've got the same problem, I'll show you how to fix it. So let me grab those parts. Let me snip off the ends of my zip ties and then we're almost done. All right, some really quick, uh, you know, related repair, as I mentioned, here is my PDC sensor. I've got the double-sided 3M, that automotive, automotive adhesive. Now, the one thing you want to make sure to do is get as thin as you can get because if it's thick, it's going to stand, it's going to make the sensor, you know, in deeper inside your bumper and it's going to be set back a little bit. So you want to get the thin, really the thinnest you can get and then just put it on. Obviously, I've still got the red, I've still got the cover, you know, one side of the, of the, of the protector, protecting cover on right now because I'm going to peel that off before I put it down. But it really is that simple. Just get it all the way around. You can tell I just kind of used, used pieces, got it to match. So I'm going to set this into place. And really, all we've got next is just uh, putting the bumper back in place. So let me show you how you do that. As you can see, the, the bumper's partially hung again. So it's really kind of hard to do. I'd need four hands. I need two hands to hold the bumper, one to hold my camera, one to be plugging in PDC sensor. So uh, if we're trying to do it all at the same time. But here, basically what I do is, is I, I grab one hand in the middle as I walk the bumper up to the back of the car. And then I plug in. You know, there's a lot of play in the cables for the for the PDC sensors. They reach out quite far. So you can plug all four of those in and then slot the bumper up into place, the bumper cover. There's these groove tracks right here at the top and the bolts. So what I find is that I'll slide one side in, I'll loosely put in a bolt, come across, slide the other side in and loosely put in the bolt. Now it'll hang in place and I can put all the rest. Because what you're going to do now is you're going to take the corner sides and get them, you're gonna pull them up and stretch them up and in to get these tabs in through these slots and they'll just all slot and press into place. So you'll do that on both sides, which is just simple, just line them up and press it in. And then, and here's that loop I was telling you about that that T20 drives up through. What you're gonna do is then take your T20 and drive that T20 back up through right here 
through this mounting spot that goes through right through the frame right here and put that on both sides and then you're almost done. Then all you have to do is just walk the three down the side, the three eight millimeters across the bottom, the, th the three 10 millimeters across the middle and the ones around the other side, and you're all done. And it really is that simple. And as you can tell, as you can see, there's, you can already see the really radical difference that this makes, even when it's hanging not quite straight already. But I love the way this looks. This really is that kind of, kind of finalizing final piece for the exterior of my car. So I'm really excited by this. Of course, we'll have to put our taillights back on as well, but let me get the rest of the bumper all hung up and then we'll do the taillights and we're, we're done. One thing you always want to check as you do this, make sure that your body panel is straight. You know, it's all nice and secure. There are, you don't have any huge gaps or anything because you can, you know, interfere with the spacing here a little bit if you have this stuck out a little bit. So make sure that it looks good when you do it. It's not hard, it's not overly complex. Then your taillight just goes back in the reverse order. Just grab the light, plug it in. If you notice, there's like a little post hole right here. So you've got to combine putting it. So when you slide it on, it goes over both of the posts and there's a little, and there's, there's a post that goes in right here and it secures, just pushes into place. Put your two 10 millimeters uh, nuts back on. Make sure that these 10 millimeter bolts are now secure if everything else is straight. And then just walk across the bottom. Make sure that you've got one, two, three down the wheel well, one, two, three, eight millimeters across the bottom your three 10 millimeters across the back and then everything up the other the other wheel well and you're all done and so with the exception of putting my tail light on i'm all done and i love this this is fantastic i love the aggressive venting that's such a fantastic change the carbon fiber of the diffuser fits everything else really really well i just couldn't be happier with this this is a really easy and relatively quick install super simple and something i highly recommend the folks at Keys Motorsports are absolutely fantastic. Debbie and if you ever end up having any questions, I'm sure they'll be glad to help you out. So I'm just going to finish up. You do the same. Put your tools away and you're all done. One well, a quick additional side note. Don't forget your rain track. You notice that there's a little groove on this side, so you're going to fit it in as you slide it in. Get this groove to fit in with the metal right there. If the rubber traps back a little bit, just pull it out and then slide it down because there's a plastic hook on this side and a plastic hook on this side slide it down into place and then you can see it lines up with the hole right there for the little plastic grommet nut whatever you want to call it just push it into place there you go so don't forget that piece as well okay all done as you can see and really looks amazing i couldn't be happier with this upgrade to the car just one more tasteful piece of carbon fiber and i really love it thank you to keys motorsports for this fantastic product and brian brian of keys specifically what a great dude make sure to check them out for all your needs for upgrades both performance and visual on your car and i'll look forward to seeing you on my next project